Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. You can support this podcast on patreon.com forward slash first paw media. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by First Paw Coffee Company, specializing in private label premium blend coffee. If you're serious about coffee, you should check it out. First Paw Coffee's passion is high quality, small batch roasted coffee. They take the extra time to taste and get everything perfect before they release new blends. They aim to bring you a cup of happiness each time you pour yourself some coffee. Find out more at ak.dog slash free and enter for a chance to win some First Paw Coffee prizes, a book from our collection and tote bag. One winner will be selected at random each month. That's ak.dog slash free. Did you know that puppies and music can be a positive therapeutic mix? Music can mask scary noises like thunder and fireworks or upsetting sounds like a trespassing mail deliverer that put your puppy's tail in a twist. It can even be helpful for separation anxiety or pep up a lethargic pet. The cadence of certain sounds influences the body's natural rhythms and can speed them up and energize the listener or slow them down to calm them. On today's show, we are talking all about music therapy and puppies. We are also talking about separation anxiety and how music can help too. From First Paw Media, sponsored by Alaska Dog Works Professional Canine Training Center in Anchorage, Alaska. This is Dog Works Radio, committed to families and their dogs to build lifelong and fulfilling relationships. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now, here are your hosts, Robert and Michelle Forto. Hello and welcome to Dog Works Radio. This is your host, Michelle Forto, and I'm the lead trainer of Alaska Dog Works. Here, we help owners and their dogs have the best possible relationships. Before I get started, I have to do a bit of a brag. Did you know that this is our 12th anniversary show? That's right. We are old school podcasters now. It's hard to believe that our little show that started in the lobby of our training center at Denver Dog Works with a live audience of one or two people that showed up before their class now has over 700 episodes in our library and closing in on almost 4 million downloads. Now, we aren't as big as that other podcast called Serial, but... 4 million times someone has taken the time to turn to our podcast to hopefully get some advice, be entertained, or even possibly learned something. I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Here's to the next 12 years. I wonder if podcast will even be a thing then. Who would have thought that in one group that I am in, podcast movement a community of podcasters has grown to more than 55,000 members that is a lot of podcasts today we are talking about music therapy for puppies before you dismiss this as some woohoo hocus pocus junk hear me out If you are a fan of the podcast, you know I talk a lot about the four critical periods of a puppy's life. Within the four critical periods, there is a fear period and you must recognize that sounds like thunderstorms and fireworks are a very big deal for puppies. Music is a great tool to use. In fact, we have taken this to a whole new level and started creating playlists right here on our podcast and even on our YouTube channel, First Paw Media, with the special music to use when training your dog. Go check it out. Today, we are going to talk about a bunch of other reasons why music therapy is good for your puppy and also talk about separation anxiety, which music does wonders for too. A hyperactive or fearful pet can be soothed with music or distracted by nature sounds like water running from a fountain, 
Lethargic pets that need to exercise can be energized with chirping squirrel sounds or fast music to get them up and bouncing to the beat. Puppies are even more sensitive to sound than people are. Puppy hearing is very acute, so it doesn't have to be loud music to have an effect. Sound causes physical changes in the body. Brain waves change with different kinds of sounds. Music with a pulse of about 60 beats per minute slows the brain waves to the listener, feels more relaxed and peaceful and shifts the consciousness into a more alert state. This rhythm also slows breathing, which calms the mind and improves metabolism. Even the heart wants to follow the pulse of the music. Faster rhythms energize the listener as their heartbeat increases, the blood pressure rises while slower tempos simply calm them. Listening to music releases endorphins, natural painkillers that are produced by the brain and reduces the levels of stress hormones in the blood. Sound therapy is still considered pretty new. One of the best known applications is an ultrasound that uses the echo of high frequency sound waves to take diagnostic pictures inside the body. Doctors even use it to break up kidney stones with vibration instead of surgery. Over the last 20 years, music therapy has become a staple of the human mental health profession and is often used with troubled children and brain disordered patients. It's also helpful for stress relief for people in general. Therapeutic heart music helps relieve pain that drugs don't, soothes an emotional upset, and has become a particular help in hospice situations for human patients. One of the pioneers, Susan Ryman, also promotes the therapeutic effect of heart music on animals. The sound of harp music calms fractious dogs and cats and offers almost a natural sedative effect so that the upset animals become quiet, lay down, and go to sleep. Helping puppies with music. The simplest way to treat puppies with music is to put on music or turn on the radio. Choose the music you like. Pets seem to respond best to music their owners enjoy because of the bond you share. If you have a favorite music genre you often play, your pet will associate the sound with your presence. So playing the same music when they are alone will remind them of you and help ease problems like separation anxiety. Soft music with a slow, steady rhythm helps calm agitated puppies. It can help arthritic pets relax their muscles and increase their range of motion. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes for the music to take effect. Many pets enjoy Mozart or other classical music. New Age, Soft Jazz, Southwest music with flutes and natural sounds, or even ballad type country music can be soothing. This music should be melodic, not dissonant and the tempo even and slow. You can play calming music anytime your pet feels stressed, even all day long as a background to help keep them calm. Turn up the volume to energize your pet. Moderate to loud music with a more driving beat energizes the emotions and can encourage lethargic pets to exercise and lift depression. Rock music, even the driving energy of rap, may get a pet's tail moving but any up-tempo music from classical to contemporary has the power to energize. Again, play the music for at least 10 to 15 minutes at a time to get your pet in the right mood. Any music that you play on a regular basis helps your puppy identify that sound with your comforting presence even if your puppy doesn't suffer from separation anxiety, familiar music can help you if you need to be away from home because you can play your favorite music to help your pup feel better about your presence. We're gonna take a short break here and learn all about First Paw Coffee. 
Earlier, you learned all about First Paw Coffee Company, and now I'm going to tell you about its Road Trip and Blend. First Paw Coffee Company's Road Trip and Blend is a light roast of South American origin with tasty notes of citrus, milk chocolate, and cream. Road Trippin' is inspired by car rides with the pups, roller coasters, and music festivals. Be sure to go to firstpaw.coffee forward slash free to be entered to win a bunch of cool prizes. That's firstpaw.coffee forward slash free. Puppy separation anxiety isn't uncommon. According to veterinarian behaviorists reporting at the Western Veterinary Conference, about 14% of pet dogs seen in veterinary clinics suffer from problems being left alone. Puppies adopted before eight weeks of age, mixed breeds, and pups adopted from shelters are at highest risk. So what is separation anxiety? Animal behaviorists recently have begun to use different terms to describe the condition. That's because not all dogs become anxious when left alone, although they do act out. Separation distress doesn't necessarily mean the pup feels anxious and probably is a more accurate description of dogs displaying separation behaviors. Separation behaviors encompass a whole range of activities that might take place as a result of the puppy being left alone. Many times dogs act out because they're stressed or anxious at the owner's absence. Affected puppies feel over attachment to one or more family members. Problems develop when the amount of time you spend with the pet changes. Puppies learn to become comfortable with their new routine and a change in routine, perhaps due to kids returning to school, your new job, new dog introduction or baby can cause your puppy stress. Separation behaviors. The puppy follows you around the house and becomes increasingly upset as you prepare to leave. When left alone, affected pups act anxious or distressed, often become extremely vocal, and sometimes forget house training. They may destroy property either to escape or as a way to relieve stress. Many pups with separation anxiety target personal items. For instance, they chew up your shoes or a favorite purse. They aren't retaliating for being left alone because these items smell like you that can trigger anxiety that prompts destructive displacement behaviors. Puppies may also seek out objects that smell like you because your scent comforts them. But some behaviorists suggest that separation behaviors such as emptying your sock drawer or chewing up the toilet paper may arise out of boredom. This could be the canine equivalent of a teenager left alone by parents and throwing a party. About the only way you can tell the difference is to set up a video camera while you're gone and have it looked at by a behaviorist to see if the dog shows anxious behavior or simply appear, appears to have a good time disemboweling the sofa cushions. In a similar fashion, pups may forget potty training. Older pups might even decide to mark with urine or defecate on something that smells like their owner. This isn't to get back at you, but instead is the pup's attempt to self-soothe. Calming separation behaviors. Pets should never be punished for any anxiety-based behavior because punishment makes it worse. If your puppy exhibits destructive separation behaviors, you can take steps to reduce the problem. Your veterinarian may prescribe drug therapy that relieves the angst, such as Clomacalm or Reconcile, but drugs alone won't be a magic wand. The most intense acting out happens within the first 20 to 30 minutes after you leave and how long you're gone doesn't seem to matter. So if you can distract the puppy during this critical period, much of its upset feelings will be relieved and destructiveness may be eliminated. Desensitize the puppy to the triggers of departure. Pick up your car keys 50 times, but then don't leave. Put on your coat or open the door a dozen times, then stay inside. Repetition of these cues makes them lose meaning, so the pup doesn't get upset and remains calmer when you actually do leave. Stage absences to build up the puppy's tolerance level. Leave for one minute, two minutes, four, 
10, and so on. Do this 10 or 15 times in a row so that the repetition makes it less important to the pup. Make sure the puppy gets lots of exercise before you leave and after you return home. A tired pup is a better behaved pup. If it's worn out, it will soon snooze rather than chew up the cushions. Flower essences also can help dogs with anxieties. You can add the drops to the puppy's water bowl for all day sipping. You can also offer puzzle toys filled with tasty treats and hide them around the house for the puppy to find. When it's thinking and hunting for treats, it can't worry or develop a full-blown panic attack. We're living in uncertain times. If there is one thing we can be thankful for, that is the recent pet adoption boom. Shelters are being cleared out, and that means you may not know much about your new best friend. Alaska Dog Works virtual and on-site classes are the best way for you to build a lasting bond and learn about your pup, new or old. From setting up a proper routine to learning the commands and much more, Alaska Dog Works provides you with the resources to develop your dog into one of the best. Right now, Alaska Dog Works has an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Go to alaskadogworks.com now and use promo code DOGWORKS and save 20% off your training program at the time of your booking. Visit alaskadogworks.com and use promo code DOGWORKS to save 20% today. That's alaskadogworks.com and use promo code DOGWORKS at the time of booking. All right, you guys, we would love to know if you've ever used music therapy with your dog. Let us know. And for our listeners local and on KVRF, it is now time for our calendar of events. February is chock full of month-long observances for you and your pet. Let's get through them, shall we? February is Beat the Heat Month, Dog Training Education Month, National Cat Health Month, Spay Neuter Awareness Month, Pet Dental Health Month, Responsible Pet Owners Month, and National Prevent a Litter Month. Whoa, there's a lot going on in 28 short days, you guys. Stay tuned to our social media pages as we will be doing some cool stuff in regard to these events. This week... On February 2nd, it's Sled Dog Day. Every day is Sled Dog Day here. February 3rd, Doggy Date Night. Whoa, this sounds fun. Did you know that we have a very popular podcast episode called The Best Dog Movies on Netflix? Go to dogworksradio.com and search for it in the search box. And enjoy your Doggy Date Night on February 3rd. February 3rd is also National Golden Retriever Day. I bet our buddies Miranda and her pup Hank will be partying it up. In early April, we will be at the Matsu Outdoorsman Show at the Alaska State Fairgrounds in Palmer for this three-day event. Come out and say hello. We like it when you say hi. We will also have all of our coffee blends on sale, a bunch of gear, and you can learn all about our Adventure Dog Club just in time for spring. We are excited about this one. It was canceled last year because of COVID, but this year is supposed to be bigger than ever. Not only will we be there, but there will be food trucks, live events, demonstrations, and much more. This is the premier event for anyone that is interested in getting outdoors in Alaska. On April 17th, we will be starting our group classes in the park. They will be held at Wonderland Park in Wasilla at 1130 a.m. These are free for our current and past clients and part of your training package. If you are not a client or just want to check us out, this is a great way. We do have a nominal drop-in fee. We are gathering gear for our first ever nose work class and try ball and Robert is thinking about doing pack walks again too. If you want to get an idea what we will be doing, head on over and watch the pack on Amazon Prime Video. It is a really cool show. 
Did you know that every Wednesday and Sunday nights, we do a Facebook Live at 7 p.m.? Be sure to check us out on our Facebook page. If you missed the live broadcast, you can always tune in to those later. We have a special announcement. Our daughter, Nicole, has joined Alaska Dog Works, and she will be offering, among other things, day training classes in Anchorage. Much more on that to come. Did you know that Nicole started training dogs at nine years old and one of her first clients was a family with two huge Rottweilers. They say they couldn't walk on a leash. Also, stay tuned for information about the summer festival, how you can train your dog to run in the Alaska Dog Works Dryland Derby this fall, and much more. As always, you can keep up to date by following us on our social channels. Just search Dog Works Radio. And for more training tips and tricks and to learn how to schedule a free discovery call to talk with us about how to make your dog one of the best, visit alaskadogworks.com. And one last thing. Did you know the single best thing you can do is tell your family and friends about our show? Why don't you send them a link to this episode and they too will soon be a rabid listener. See you next time. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company. Learn more at firstpaw.coffee. You can support this podcast on patreon.com forward slash first paw media. From First Paw Media, this is Dog Works Radio. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you'll see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. Your hosts are Robert and Michelle Forto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media. Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Forto and her team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com. Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com.